So this week we studied a bunch of stories, about eight stories, and my one-line summary, Making Sense of Pogs, a story how the U.S. military is using a toy as money. Put up in a parking lot, an artist who lived in an apartment in a shopping mall parking lot for several years for free. Hot to shop. The Mall of America, capital M, Santa, the Mall of America is a huge building that has an extremely low electricity bill. The Potato Farmer and the Hares. A 61-year-old man was the long-distance champion for a race that took over five days. Impressive story. The walk man. Walking was a huge sport, no S, a huge sport in America in the mid-1800s, comma, but it ended thanks to cars, dot, 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 especially a taxi, a taxi. Thank you. And Dabawala, Dabawala. A story about the Indian lunchbox. And we should add this. And what was it? Q, uh, uh, Sigma, what is it? Sigma Q, what is it? I forgot. Help me. Sigma 6, right? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Six Sigma, uh, a story about the Indian lunchbox and its, let's add this, Santa, and its Six Sigma rating. And that's a big S. Thank you. The next story was flushed with love in one part of India. If a man wants to get married, he, sorry, not you, he must prove he has a toilet. <laughs> and our final story, Unmountain Man. Another man in India, for the love of his late wife, that can be set off in commas, for the love of his late wife, carved a tunnel 360 feet long so that other people could more easily get access to a hospital. Very pretty story. Very amazing story. Uh, kind of sad too, but anyway, pretty amazing. Lots of interesting stories today. Now, we have a bunch of people who have signed up for uh, summaries. I'm very happy. Eva will do Hot to Shop. Fulla will do The Potato Farmer and the Hares. Mahmoud will do The Walk Man. Marwa will do Unmountain Man. And Valerie too. A little bit of competition. Um, Santa <laughs> will do Dabawala. And Gulia and Alex are here to listen. Uh, thank you very much for everybody for joining us today. Um, let me go ahead and bring Eva on first. Eva, how are you doing? <coughs> Eva? Eva, your microphone is off. Eva fell asleep. There you go. Yeah. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Eva, did you okay, type, so, uh, did you type your summary or? Uh, okay, I can type it, but now I I read it. I have it in my hand. Okay, let me go ahead and and I'll do the dictation. Hold on a second. Let me get ready here. Okay. Uh -huh. uh. So um, at the beginning of my uh, summary, I want also to say as you presented all the um, uh, stories that. Um, why I chosen especially this one uh, is also because uh, I was there. Oh, you've been to the Mall of America. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because my son he graduated uh, at McAllister College. Okay, great. And, uh, at the time when he graduated, I was there, so and <laughs> I spent there the whole day. Did you like it? Oh yes, but. Uh, Yes, but uh, I was tired. Really, it's very so tired. huge. It was a kind of attraction. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, let me say hi to Masood. Hi, Masood. Hello. Hi, Masood. Can How you? How are you, sir? Welcome, welcome. Can you please 
mute your microphone uh, so that uh, it will okay. have a better audio okay. connection. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Masood. Thank you. Uh, this is Masood's first time. I want to say welcome. Okay, let's go back to Eva. Uh, so Eva, uh, Eva has a son who graduated from a university uh, near the Mall of America, and she went there for his graduation, and she had the chance to visit the Mall of America. She shopped till she dropped. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge... Oh, not really. I, <laughs> I observed and uh, ex um, ex explore. Yeah, explore. That's perfect. Yeah, explore. Park and, I don't know, um, different uh, attractions because... Um, you know, these vendors, they do everything to, to take money from people. <laughs> that they absolutely do. That's right. All right, Eva, go for it. Give us your summary. I'm ready to type. Okay. So, it's important for all of us to be friendly to this environment. The Mall of America in Minnesota is an excellent example of being green large scale. Its enormous area uh, in harsh weather conditions provide a pleasant shelter for residents and visitors without paying electricity bills. It is possible because the designer decided to warm the place with a lot of skylights, viewing it from the raw culture and especially from humans, uh, human warmth of all the visitors and employees. Sometimes, um, the, okay, sorry. Ah, sometimes the heat may be too abundant, so the air conditioning is needed. Very good, very good. Okay, the, actually, Eva, the microphone uh, connection was not good in the very middle, um, so the sound quality wasn't that good. But uh, if you do have it typed, I would love for you to send it to Santa, um, and uh, that would be great. Now, okay, well, I, I type it in your into message and I send it. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay. Now, I do want to say, mm -hmm. however, and don't be angry at me. It's too detailed. So I'm going to give you uh, another version. And basically, I, I could hear what you were saying. Um, so hopefully, uh, you'll agree. Uh, but I did miss some of it. So I'm going to type it right now. Just a second. Okay, um, now I just made this a uh, really quick one, um, and I think I got your main points. Uh, let me make sure. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to put this in the chat room. And this is, once again, a really short version. Remember, you guys, I want you guys to try and keep your uh, the vocabulary simple and the sentences to three or four. Keep the vocabulary simple and the sentences to three, four, maximum five sentences. This is kind of what I'm hoping for. Uh, once again, uh, Eva's summary was great. She did use a lot of difficult vocabulary, which is fine. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I would like uh, simpler uh, vocabulary. Uh, and this is what I wrote here. Uh, Eva, uh, can you read my version, please? Okay, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh. 
The Mall of America is one of the biggest buildings in the U.S. Yeah, we have a, a very bad audio connection with Eva, um, so I'm going to read it for I'm her. Sorry, I, I don't know why. Oh, I, so it happens. Sometimes, it yeah, sometimes it's the, the uh, Wi-Fi connection. Uh, don't worry, though. I'll, I'll read it for everybody. The Mall of America is one of the biggest buildings in the U.S., and it's green. In the very cold winter, they spend almost zero money on heat. Why? The design of the building and the thousands of people who shop keep it warm. Sometimes it gets too warm in the winter and they need to turn on the AC. There you go. So, And that's pretty much what uh, Eva said. She used a little bit more of the original sentences, which is fine. That's absolutely fine. But I do want you guys to remember when you do a summary, sometimes it's best to imagine your audience is a young child. A young child. Yeah, not necessarily four years old, uh, but, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. They have a good vocabulary, but uh, keep them as your audience member. Because if you're speaking to a young child, it's much easier to sound more lively and interesting. If you're speaking to an adult, you have to sound professional. You want to sound intelligent. You want to sound serious. But when you're speaking to a child, you sound more interesting. And believe me, that is very, very true. Santa, you're doing an excellent job. Oh, boy. I'm going to have to buy Santa uh, some new fingers for Christmas. <laughs> Foam fingers. There you go. Foam fingers. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Eva... Um, the now, I we established my connection. If you want, I can read it once again. Is it better now? It sounds better. Santa, can you take us back and let's, yeah, let, read Mike uh, one more time. Let me hear you read it, please. Mm -hmm. The Mall of America is one of the biggest buildings in the U.S. and it's green. In the very cold winter, they spent almost zero money on heat. Why? The design of the building and the thousands of people who shop keep it warm. Sometimes it gets too warm in the winter and they need to turn on the AC. Perfect. Yeah, your intonation, your rhythm uh, was really, really great. Excellent job. AC, everybody, uh, yeah. air conditioning. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eva. So, happy. Okay, who Santa? Who's next here? Fulla, Fulla, and the potato farmer and the hares. Fulla, turn your mic on. Um, did you yes, type yes. your summary or not? Yes, yes I typed it. I will send it. Can you copy your summary and paste it in the chat room? Uh, yes, of course, I will send it. Great. Okay. I hear your children in the background, Fula. He's calling me, yes. Mama. Mama. Hey, you're, you, is that your daughter? Uh, 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 my son, my son. You're, my little son. English. He speaks English. No, he speaks no, speak French. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's... Okay. I, no, no. It's... Okay, I mean, <laughs> Sorry. Don't worry. Don't worry. We, you know what, Fula, we have uh, Gulia, and Gulia has three children also, and Gulia's yeah. baby is always talking while Gulia is talking, so we're used to it. We have no problem with children talking in the background, okay? Okay. Okay. Go okay. for it, Fula. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't know how I... Uh, 
<laughs> okay, that's okay. You, you tell us when you're ready, okay? I can read it. I can read it. Yes, go ahead. Yes, okay. Um, okay. The potato farmer and. Uh, oh my God! I I lose it. That's okay. Fula, why don't you why don't you take care of your son and then uh, come back in a couple minutes, okay? Uh, it's short. I can read it. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Go ahead. The potato go ahead. farmer, the yes. An Australian Australian potato farmer won a long distance race because he used to run around his sheep without sleeping for many days. His running style, called Beyond Shuffle, is proven effective. Wow, that was really excellent. That was perfect. It was short. It had Sorry all the keywords. Nice. <laughs> Fula, you did an excellent job. Uh, I want you to send it to Santa when you can, uh, so that we can share it with everybody. Okay. Okay. Uh, I uh, I'm sorry, I must leave, and I will send it to. Thank Santa. you, thank you, Fula. Thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Oh, she's busy. We can hear her son <laughs> in the background causing terror, terrorizing his mother. Pay attention to me, not those other people. That's not French. <laughs> anyway, uh, Fula did a great job. Uh, it was about an Australian farmer. Uh, he was also a sheep herder, and uh, he had a very funny way of running uh, he was in a race, and he won the race to everybody's great surprise, despite his running style, despite his speed, despite his age, he was the champion. It took him five days, and uh, he was the winner by, I think, 10 hours. So, yeah, Fuller did a great job. Very short, very simple. And, uh, yeah. Can I add something? Sure. Yeah, I, I talked with Fela before that, and she told me that uh, it, it, this competition that like uh, what between uh, rabbit and uh, and the turtle, I think. <laughs> rabbit and the hare. I'm sorry, the the tortoise and the hare. The tortoise and the hare. Tortoise, yeah. Yeah, I put it in the chat room. Yeah, exactly. It's like the, the tortoise and the hare. So the potato farmer is the tortoise, and the hares refers to the professional runners. Marwa, do, do you know, uh, that's what you're talking about, right? The tortoise and the hare? Uh, I'm not sure what the meaning of the hare Okay, so the tortoise, there's a, there's a uh, story, um, and... To use other words, Santa, can you type this in parentheses? The turtle and oh, the yeah. rabbit. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I said that the, the, the turtle and rabbit. I... Right. And we don't say turtle and rabbit. We say tortoise and hare. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. So I'll give everybody a really quick definition here. Um, a tortoise is a land turtle. Turtles are in the water. Tortoises are on land. So they're the same thing. They look the same, but the turtle is in the water, and the tortoise is in the, on land. The hare is a type of rabbit. The hare is actually skinnier and taller than a regular cute rabbit. When we say rabbit, people think of cute bunnies, but when we say hare... We think of the cartoon character like Bugs Bunny. Um, they're much faster and uh, they're much more wild. I don't. People will eat bunnies. Sorry, uh, but uh, yeah, we don't eat hair. I guess you could. Uh, yeah, and this is an Aesop's fable. That's right, the tortoise and the hare. Uh, is it an Aesop's fable? I think it is. Yeah. Anyway, so the, that's the idea. So if we look at the title of the story, it says The Potato Farmer and the Hares. That's right. The Potato Farmer represents the tortoise, 
And there wasn't just one hare, there were many hares, and the hares refers to the other runners. There you go, the tortoise and the hare. Uh, I'm back, I can uh, read uh, my uh, summary. Oh, wonderful, one more time. And read it slower for us, Fula. Okay. The potato farmer and the hares. An Australian potato farmer won a long distance race because he used to run around his sheep without sleeping for many days. His running style called Young Shuffle is proven effective. I love it. Can you type that and send it to Santa, please? Uh, I send it to, to, to Santa in his uh, uh, email. Okay, it's great. Santa, Santa can find that and then copy it. I want to take a look at it. Santa, can you check your email? Okay, I'm Australian. Uh, da -da. Check the spelling there. An Australian potato farmer won a long distance race because he used uh, he used to run around. <laughs> okay, so let me fix this a little bit. An Australian potato farmer won a long distance race. Um, I'm going to add a little bit. Let's do, Santa, let's do this. A 61-year-old Australian potato farmer won a long-distance race despite his age, his speed, and his form. Next sentence. He was victorious because, and then you can continue with uh, what uh, uh, Fula said, because he used to run around. <laughs> Let me, I'm going to change that though. Because he used to herd his sheep on foot without sleeping, uh, uh, yeah, with, on foot without sleeping for many days at a time, many days at a time. Good. His running style, comma, called the young shuffle, called the Uh, actually, the quotation should go, yeah, that's fine, uh, called the Young Shuffle, has been proven effective. Yeah, get rid of that. There you go. And then add this at the end for long distance, for ultra distance runners. Period. Yeah, and just make that one sentence. Excellent, excellent. Um, Santa, uh, why don't you, instead of keeping the run around, just get rid of it. Um, just get rid of that. Uh, run around can mean play, have fun. That's why we got rid of that. And put it all together here. And I want Fula to read it one more time. Hold on a second. Let's get, let Santa clean this up. Thank you, there we go, good. Go ahead, Fula. Yeah? Fula, read it one more time, please. Um, uh, mine? No, I, what we have on the screen. Santa, can you put it into one paragraph? It's It's too many lines, can you? Put it together, and I want uh, Fuller to read what we have on the screener. He was victorious. Connect that sentence, Santa. There we go. Can you see Santa's screen, Fuller? No. Ah, uh, you cannot. Okay, okay. That's okay. I'll read it. I'll read it. Now, this is listen carefully, Fuller, to my changes, okay? Okay. A 61-year-old 
Australian potato farmer won a long distance race despite his age, his speed, and his form. He was victorious because he used to herd his sheep on foot without sleeping for many days at a time. His running style, called the Young Shuffle, has been proven effective for ultra-distance runners. How does that sound? Uh, very nice. Yeah, you did a great job. Really, really super job. Santa, uh, right at the beginning, N61, get rid of the N, please. And at the end, uh, effective for ultra distance, get rid of the comma there. Great. Perfect, perfect. Excellent job. I really liked it. Now, what I did with Fuller's story, everybody, is I added a little bit of information, but still, this is three sentences. Perfect. Excellent job. Wonderful. Thank you, Fula. You're welcome. What, what happened to your son? Uh, it's quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> Very effective. Santa, who's next? Mahmoud is next. Mahmoud, are you ready? <clears throat> I'm ready, yes. Excellent. Now, Mahmoud, did you type your summary? Yes, about six sentences. Can you copy it and put it in the chat room, please? There you go. And Santa will copy that. And uh, once she copies it, uh, I'll ask you to start. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> this ah, the first time, so. Okay, okay. I, all right, Santa, get rid of half of it. There you go. All right, Mahmoud, go for it. Uh, okay. Uh, Edward Basin Weston is the most athlete, famous pedestrian. He started working in 1861, he walked from Boston to Washington, a distance nearly 500 miles in 10, in 10 days. He built the foundation stone for a competition, competition sport called pedestrianism, competitive walking. After the invitation of the car, the, competi the, competitive, the competitive walking went and almost disappeared. A cab in New York hit Western, hit, hit Western, and he died in 1922. Uh, 20, uh, nine. <laughs> 29. Excellent job. Really wonderful. The length is really good, and uh, the words that you used, very nice. Let me fix a couple of things, okay? Okay. Edward Payson Weston is the most famous pedestrian athlete. So I'm going to change the order there. Um, Edward Payson Weston is the most famous pedestrian athlete. Mm -hmm. There you go, athlete. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum. Uh, he started walking in 1861. Let's, I'm going to add this. Santa, change this. On a bet, so after athlete, on a bet, he walked from, and then go back to Mahmoud's, from Boston to Washington. On a bet, he walked from Boston to Washington, a, near, a distance nearly 500 miles, comma, in 10 days. Okay, I like this. He put the foundation stone. This is good, especially for uh, construction. And we can think of it, he constructed the sport. However, uh, let me change it there. Um, he, let's do this. He became the father for the for the 
competitive sport. He became the father for the competitive sport called pedestrianism. Quotation. And then dash dash competitive walking. No quotation. So the, the name of the sport is actually pedestrianism, but that was in 1850 or 1860. It was called pedestrianism. Now in 2015, we say competitive walking. Okay. And then the next one, after the invention of the car, and then get rid of the, competitive walking waned and almost disappeared. A cab in New York, uh, and let's do this, the last sentence. Ironically, a cab, a small a, in New York hit Weston, and he died in 1929. Brilliant. Excellent job. Mahmoud, I'm really happy. It's a sad story. It is, yeah. Uh, Mahmoud, can you read my version once, please? <clears throat> okay. Edward Basin Weston is the most famous pedestrian athlete. On a pit, he walked from Boston to Washington, a distance nearly 500 miles in 10 days. He became the father for the competitive sport called pedestrianism, competitive walking. After the invitation of the car, Invention, invention, okay. After the invention of the car, competitive walking went and almost disappeared. Ironic, ironically, 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 a cab in New York hit Weston and he died in 1929. Excellent job. Super, super job. That was great. This is your first uh, summary, but this is your third uh, book club class and you guys you did a great job you listened well and uh, I think the other students helped you uh, do an excellent job super job Mahmoud thank you great Marwa is next it's my turn <laughs> so boy the pressure is on after Mahmoud Mahmoud set a new high standard uh, good luck did you type your summary? Do you know, Cochin, I can't speak ever in the presence of Mahmoud if we in an Arabic, uh, <laughs> an Arabic book club, because he, guess what? <laughs> Do you know? Because <laughs> he's know so perfect. He's a great writer? <laughs> I know, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, he's wow. a poet, so you can't say anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you type your summary, Marwa, or not? Yeah, I typed it. Can you copy it and send it to Santa? Okay, of course. Can I read it before? Yeah, you can do it. You mean later, yes. Okay. I'm mountain man. <laughs> okay, this is a real romantic story, and uh, ah, here's my summary. Uh, love can move the mountains. Uh, really, it happens. An Indian poor man suffered of traveling lots of miles around the mountain to reach the medical care for his beloved ill wife. But she did. So he pledged to dig a road through the mountain. And he did, using his little hammer and his sincere heart. Beautiful. <laughs> no, that's great. I loved it. Um, I really liked it. Yeah, it was really good. Um, uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Can you uh, can email it? Uh, there we go. So uh, thank you. Yeah, email it again. Perfect, perfect. Santa, copy that and let me fix some of it. Very nice. Uh, love can move mountains. Really, it happens. Small I. Um, let's change the order here. So an Indian poor man, we have to change it to a poor Indian man. This is really hard to explain, but in Amer in English, we do have sort of an order of adjectives. And when we describe a person, um, the Indian should directly be uh, describing the noun. So a poor Indian man suffered. Uh, 
And let me see, a poor Indian man suffered a drought. Suffered. Usually we say suffered from, uh, suffered from, but that's not the case here. Suffered because of, suffered because of traveling lots of miles. That's okay, but I'm going to go with collocation. Too many miles. Around a mountain. Around a mountain. And I'm just going to add this in order to reach, and in, in order to reach, uh, and get rid of the medical care for his beloved but ill. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah get, no, get rid of that. Yeah, beloved wife. Good. Uh, get rid of ill, Santa. Beloved wife. Uh, but she died. That's too shocking. Uh, unfortunately, yes, yeah, she died. Not dead. Died. Unfortunately, she died. Get rid of but. But is too shocking. Too hard of a word. Mm -hmm. um, afterwards, instead of so, afterwards, get rid of so. Good. He pledged that he would. Two is okay. Pledge two is fine, but I want to say that he would. He pledged that he would dig a road, uh, dig a tunnel mm -hmm. through the mountain. And he did so. And he did so. Comma using his little hammer and his sincere heart. Oh, that's very nice. I'm not going to add anything more. Many miles, there's this extra space in there. Santa, can you tighten up those sentences? Great. And then uh, in the second line, many miles, there's an extra space in there. I'm sorry, I just... Those silly things bother me. Um, upward, thank you. Great, perfect. Okay, uh, Marwa, read it one more time, please. Okay. Uh, love can move mountains. Really, it happened. A poor Indian man suffered because of traveling too many miles around the mountain in order to reach medical care for his beloved wife. Unfortunately, she died. Afterwards, he pledged that he would dig a tunnel through the mountain, and he did so using his little hammer and his sincere heart. Excellent job, excellent job. Now, what Marwa did, Marwa did leave out many uh, specific uh, details, uh, the size of the tunnel, how many years it took, and what happened at the end. That's okay. Um, that This is a method of uh, summary, and what she did is absolutely uh, perfect. It's totally fine. Now, this is going to be interesting because Valerie also has a summary, and I'm curious whether or not Valerie included the other information. Valerie, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I made it even shorter, I think. <laughs> oh, I like that. And what about, did you type it? Yeah, I, I have already sent it to Santa. Excellent, excellent. Let me get Santa to put that in here, and then uh, I want you to read it. Hold on a second. Excellent. Uh, are we ready? Go for it. Yeah. If the hospital had been nearer, he, he wouldn't have lost his wife. In order to prevent someone to experience the same hardship, the widower and Indian laborer decided to shorten the distance between his village and the nearest hospital. How? By carving a mountain for two decades just with a hammer, a chisel, and nails. 
Excellent. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now I'm going to change the beginning though. The beginning is too, uh, too many questions. So okay. uh, let's see, how can we, what can we do to the beginning? Um, ba -bum -ba -bum. I'm thinking here. Let's do this. A devoted husband lost his wife because the nearest hospital was too far away. In order to prevent someone, and let's continue here. Yeah, you can copy this, and let's. I'm going to fix some things up here. Uh, in order to prevent, I'm going to change. I'm going to shorten that. In order to prevent others, instead of someone, others, and that means other people. Others with an S means other people. In order to prevent others. From and with the word prevent, using from is good in order to prevent okay. others from experiencing. And if we're going to do that, we have to change it to a gerund. The same hardship. Great, great. The widower, an Indian laborer, the spelling there. There you go. <laughs> it's British spelling. Okay. <laughs> An Indian laborer decided to shorten the distance between his village and that hospital. Because so, we talked about it earlier, so let's change it to that hospital. And that hospital. How? By carving a mountain for two decades with just, just with, I'm going to change it there, with just a hammer, a chisel, and some nails for, uh, for, uh, to keep it the same rhythm, a hammer, a chisel, and some nails. And, uh, we have to, we have to include at the very end, he did it. Um, now, both of you left out one mm, kind of important piece of information. Not, not really. The, you guys, both of you got the important information. The important information, the man's wife died. Because of that, he built a tunnel. Um, and that's the important information. But what's the, what is something that both of you left out? Marwa, uh, Valerie, what did you leave out at the very end? The fact that uh, hospital was um, built. Yeah. Yeah. It, that, that exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So the fact that a hospital was built in his city okay. and it was named after him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually, uh, we don't need that information for your summary. I really liked it. So, uh, da 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 da. Yeah, I think that's it. Valerie, can you read my version, please? Okay. A devoted husband lost his wife because the nearest hospital was too far away. In order to prevent others for, from experiencing the same hardship, the widower, an Indian laborer, decided to shorten the distance between his village and that hospital. How? By carving a mountain for two decades, with just a hammer, a chisel, and some nails. He did it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's a beautiful story. Very interesting story. If you guys haven't listened to it, uh, please do. Uh, Fula says, I must leave. Goodbye. Take care, Fula. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, excellent job to both Valerie and Marwa. Uh, Santa, Dabawala time. <laughs> Santa, did you type it? 
So I'm just going to... Oh, there you go. Uh, all right. Go for it, Santa. All right. The term Dabba well is refers to lunch delivery men in India. The origin of their business goes all the way back to British rule of India. It's a steadily growing business, and their services are noted for near 100% reliability. For less than $9 a month, they deliver hot meals to workers on a bicycle and a train. Surprisingly, their method of delivery proved to be much faster than doing it on a car. Uh, great job, great job. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, Santa, you need to send it to Santa first. Uh, the term Davawalas refers to lunch delivery men. One word, lunch delivery men in India. Term Davawalas? No, no, no. Delivery men was correct, uh, but make it one word. There you go. The origin of their business goes... Um, boom, boom, boom. Do I want to say there? Yeah, I guess so. The origin of their business goes all the way, all the way back, all the way back to British rule. Um, what's the term? They used a term... Ah, uh, yeah. There's another word, though. Gosh. Anybody remember? Yeah, there was another word. I'm trying to remember. Hold on a second. I'm looking up, too. Bum, 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 bum. If anybody... Ah, the British Raj. Yeah, the British Raj. All the way back to the British Raj. It's, and now, okay, the first word today, actually, let me see, still today, sorry, still today, still today, it's a steadily growing business, and their services are noted for their, for their nearly, noted for their nearly 100% right reliability. For less than $9 a month, they deliver hot meals to workers on a bicycle. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they deliver hot meals for less than that. They deliver hot meals to offices on a bicycle and. Ah, oh, boy, I don't like that sentence. Um, for less than $9 a month, they deliver hot meals to offices on bike and or train. On bike and or train. Get rid of a. Uh. Uh, not necessarily. They, they, they end or, yeah, on bike and or train. On bike and slash or. Yeah, perfect, perfect, train. Surprisingly, their method of delivery prove, uh, ha has proven to be has proven to be much faster than doing it by car. Great, Santa, can you read that one more time, please? Sure. Um, the term Dabba Wells refers to lunch delivery men in India. The origin of their business goes all the way back to the British Raj. So today, it's a steadily growing business, and their services are noted for their nearly 100% reliability. For less than $9 a month, they, are del they deliver hot meals to offices on bike and or train. Surprisingly, their method of delivery has proven to be much faster than doing it by car. Excellent job. This sounds great. Very, very good. Uh, I want you to put uh, lunch delivery men in uh, quotation or italics. Because there is special intonation when we say that. Great, great, great. Excellent. Okay, everybody. So we've just gone through uh, several of the stories. And there is the uh, lunch delivery. <laughs> Do you think they're delivering hamburgers? <laughs> I like that. Uh, so very interesting stories. I, I really liked the stories. Um, excellent stories. I, I thought they were entertaining.
Um, we have a bunch of questions. Once again, thanks to the one and only Valerie. Uh, the discussion topics, energy consumption. Are you sensitive to your energy consumption? Hmm. What do you do in your daily life to reduce your energy consumption. Now, what when Valerie, I have a question. When you say energy consumption, do you mean uh, the physical energy or electrical energy? Electrical energy. Okay. So uh, what do you mean by physical energy? Okay, so Santa. Okay, when you say, are you sensitive to your energy consumption? I think most Americans would consider. Uh, their personal energy, like I'm tired. Ah, okay. okay. So in this case, mm -hmm. um, are you sensitive to your energy consumption? We need to change it. Do you watch your electricity usage? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you want to say uh, electricity, but also gas and uh, the fuel you put in your car. And then I recommend that. electricity gas, uh, electricity and gas usage. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. We can say energy consumption is okay. Santa, bring it back there. I need to see what she said. Start a new section, Santa. Bring discussion topics down to the next page. There we go. Okay, uh, and bring, there we go, per perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, so, and the reason is your, the, the word your is the big problem. Uh, okay. Your is makes it personal, okay? Um, so, are you sensitive to gas and electrical consumption? That's fine, I like that. Energy consumption, is energy consumption important in your community? That would be okay too. Because uh, it's not just you, it's the community. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in your daily life to reduce your energy consumption? Once again, we would have to change that. What do you do in your daily life to conserve energy consumption? And this now we can say energy consumption, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay great. great. Uh, let me go to the next one too, Santa. Uh, getting receiving gifts for from someone. Is shopping for Christmas a chore or a pleasure for you? What do you do when you receive a gift that doesn't please you? Do you agree with the saying, it's the thought that counts? <laughs> I love it. Topic, love. Have you ever done something crazy for love? Oh, God, jeez. It's such a dangerous topic. Uh... They're all interesting. Uh, conservation, gifts, and love. Boy, oh boy. I guess uh, if anybody has a, an, uh, an opinion on any of them, you can go ahead. I'll take a, 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 a sentence or two from, from anybody. Uh, we'll start with Valerie. Valerie, these are your questions. Which one would you like to talk about? Mm, what do you do when you receive a gift that doesn't please you? Ah, lovely. So, Valerie, what do you do when <laughs> that doesn't um, I, I will say it depends on the person. If it is really someone I like, a true friend, I will just say the truth. It means I don't like your gift. Really? Is, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, definitely when it's someone I really care for, I have decided uh, to always be sincere. Can be my stepson, my husband, and f or friends. I will always uh, speak my mind. Uh, but you're I not rude. Try... You're not rude. Sorry. You're not rude, though. No, no, I'm not rude. I just say the truth. I don't uh, really like your gift. Uh, that, that's all. Yeah. It's just speaking. Um, and uh, but if it is someone you know from job or I will just say thank you. I'm happy with them. I will lie a little. Uh, <laughs> and and then what? Will you I don't care it? really. I don't care really. And then will you regift it? Regift it? 
means giving another gift? No. Offering no. Santa, can you type my question? Uh, then do you re-gift it? To re-gift something means to uh, take the gift you do not like and then give it yeah. to somebody else. Oh, no, never. I will never do that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh, no, I cannot even think about it. Uh, no, I cannot imagine <laughs> that. No. I would perhaps throw it away oh. uh, or giving, give it to a charity, you know, but not give, give the gift to someone else. No, no. Okay. No. I'll, I'll be honest, Valerie. Um, yeah. When I was an English teacher in Korea, around Christmas time, many students would give me gifts. And a very common gift would be a music CD, right? Okay. <laughs> and most of the music CDs they gave me, I really did not like. Uh, I thought this music was terrible. So what I did was I just gave those CDs as gifts to other people. <laughs> mm -hmm. I understand, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel bad. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't know that the, there was a word for that, to re-gift something. Yeah, it's a great word. Yeah, it's a terrible word, uh, but yes. it's a very useful word. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, I think most people try to sell them out. When ah, they to online, right? Online, yes. Prime Minister or websites like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Smart, smart, make some money. <laughs> and it, it's uh, also a way to to do good bargains uh, wow. at the beginning of January. January, That's you right. can find great things for um, very low price. That's yeah. right. That's a smart idea. Well, I should save. I should wait and do a little bit of shopping uh, after Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go to. Uh, I'll go up. Oh, who wants to go next? Who wants to go next for any of these questions? You don't drink alcohol? Who's asking that? Marwa, are you asking that? We'll go Marwa here uh, with you. Don't drink no, alcohol. No, no just, just Julia said, uh, Julia said I re-gift alcohol, so I asked here. I'm curious. Kachin? <laughs> go ahead, Hi, Hi. Yes. I just want to say that you know that I'm not drinking alcohol, but Every year, uh, every uh, New Year holiday at my job, they gift me a champagne with the uh, with the candies, <laughs> and <laughs> they know that I I'm not drinking, but I don't know. Anyway, they <laughs> gave me this champagne, so I regift it. Who do you regift it to? I don't know. For example, if we were, if we if we go to to guests, uh, if you go to another to party, to yeah, 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 yeah. That's smart. That's smart. You give a uh, your your company's silly, uh, but anyway, they give you <laughs> some champagne. You can regift it. That that's a good idea. Yes, because you know I don't know why, but my company cannot do the separate gift for me. For example, they give the same. They're making the right. same gift right. for all, and they cannot. Make the separate just I for had, me. You know? I had the same experience in Korea. Uh, <laughs> the company would give like meat to everybody, but we had many many teachers who were vegetarians. But anyway, they received meat, so it was really good for me because the other teachers knew that I loved to eat meat, so they gave me all their meat. So I got tons of meat every Christmas. It was fantastic. <laughs> All right, let me go to Mahmoud. Mahmoud, which one would you like to talk about? Christmas. Christmas, go for it, Mahmoud. Uh, I think the shopping for Christmas should be a pleasurable experience, not a torturous Sure. I think if we shop early for the best selection and the energy, we will, will we will really uh, enjoy Christmas when it comes. Oh, Mahmoud, that's absolutely perfectly said. Uh, so let's make sure we get this, Santa. Mahmoud said shopping early. 
or a good gift with a large selection can be a very enjoyable experience. Is that right, Mahmoud? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me, Mahmoud? Yes. Yes. Is this right? Shopping early for a good gift with a large selection can be yes. an enjoyable experience. I absolutely, absolutely agree. Uh, Mahmoud, when you uh, – I don't know about Saudi Arabia. So uh, in Saudi Arabia, when is the big shopping season? Is there a big shopping season? Is it Christmas or is it a different time? When is it? Eid. We call it Eid. Ah, yes. Eid. Yes. E-I-D, right? Yes. And when is Eid? Uh... In English, uh, and, uh, month nine, and after month nine in oh, okay. Arabic. So on, on your calendar in the ninth month? Yeah. So the... We have two. We have two. After nine and after uh, 12. Okay, okay. Or any 12, yes. So the upcoming aid is when? Maybe July? <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna I, look. I, this is not an easy question because uh, right, our kind of different than you. I'm looking. Hold on. I'm looking right now. When okay. is the our next? Is than you, so I have to check it. I'm already checking. You're too late. 2:16. Oh. So do you? Uh, bingo. July 7th. I'm a genius. <laughs> yeah, uh, a small Eid. Small Eid. Ah, uh, yes, it's Eid al Fitr. Al Fitr, yes. Al Fitr. Uh, okay, good. Uh, so June seventh, Ramadan begins, and July seventh, Eid al Fitr uh, begins, and then you have Eid al Adha. Yeah. Which is bigger? Yeah. Which is more important, Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Adha? The same, but ah. Eid al-Adha is bigger in, uh, it's four days and Eid al-Fitr is three days, just three days. Uh, I see, I see. So the gift yeah. giving is common on both of these days or which one? Both. Oh, wow, both. you guys are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> So if you are buying gifts, do you how how early, Mahmoud, how early do you go? A week before, a month before, how early do you buy gifts? Uh, the last ten days. Wow. That, and do you like going to the stores? I know you're in a wheelchair, uh, but I'm not in a wheelchair, and I hate going to the stores. Do you like going to the stores, or do you prefer online shopping? Uh, online shopping. <laughs> me too. I hate, I hate to go shop. <laughs> me too, me too. Too much pressure. <laughs> uh, Mahmoud, you're better than me. You go 10 days before. In my case, I usually go the day before. Because of if, uh, if I let, I don't find anything, and I think it will be expensive. You're right. Uh, is it the same in uh, Saudi Arabia? Is it expensive just before? Yes. Just before it, it will be double price. Wow. There you go. No, not, no, no this, um, not double price. I mean, yeah. It's more expensive. Uh, ex yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. The, the sales disappear. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Uh, good advice. Shopping early for a good gift with a large selection can be, should be, an enjoyable experience. I totally agree. Totally agree. And online shopping is always the best. Santa, I know you like to shop. Santa, I have a question for you. Do you prefer online shopping or in-store shopping? Um, I prefer online shopping. Oh, really? Sure, yeah. It's just convenient. I don't have to. I'm just lazy about it. <laughs>
Uh, anybody else? Who likes shopping offline? Everybody says uh, online is pretty convenient. Does anybody prefer offline shopping, shopping at the stores? Oh, okay. Uh-huh. So uh, I'm not sure that uh, if I like it or not, but uh, I'm sometimes um, unsure uh, if I do everything okay when I um, do shopping online. But I wanted to say about early shopping before um, before holiday. Yes. Um. It happened to me several times that I bought something really nice and I was so happy I bought it somewhere in the summer and uh, also at the beginning of September or so. But when the Christmas time comes, I'm in a panic because <laughs> I can't find where I put my present. <laughs> Um, it happens sometimes that some of them I um, I found after Christmas. Oh no! Yes. Okay, so this is really good, Santa. Let's type this. This is really good. Uh, let's go after Mahmoud. Uh, I hate going to the stores. Uh, you don't you don't get good deals if you shop last minute. Uh, we'll keep that for Mahmoud. You don't get good deals if you shop last minute. Connect that up there with Mahmoud's line. And then, uh, and then let's add uh, Eva's line here right after that. Um, no, 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 before me. There we go. Uh, shopping early is is great, but <laughs> the problem is you must remember. Where you put the gifts, or you might not be able to find them <laughs> when Christmas comes around. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's such a great problem. <laughs> but it wasn't so funny for me at the time. I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> uh, you remember. We can always laugh after the tragedy. Before the oh, yeah. tragedy, there's no laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Any other people who want to make a comment or, or anything on this? Anything, anything. Alex says, grocery store shopping offline. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's a good point, good point. Uh, so Alex, grocery shopping offline, but Christmas gift or aid shopping online. Is that right? Yeah, yeah good chat. I think so. Now, Alex, I have a question. So you and Gulia um, live in Moscow, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And your uh, your your religion is Muslim. Yeah. And everybody, or most people in Moscow celebrate Christmas, or the Russian Christmas, right? Yeah, right. Uh, but you know um, how, how I said before, in Russia, most popular um, uh, New Year Eve. Right, right. So yeah. was it January 7th? I uh, know it's uh, December 31. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So, but my question, my question, Alex, um, everybody has a long vacation at the beginning of January, uh, but what about you and your kids? Uh, do you also, I, I not, not from a religious point of view, but do you still celebrate Christmas as a holiday? And then also, do you celebrate uh, Aid as a holiday? How do you do it? I'm just curious. Yeah, of course, uh, we kind of celebrate, uh, we, uh, you know, we, our family, we don't, we do not celebrate uh, Christmas as a holiday, as, um, as a religious holiday, holiday. yeah, right, right. yes, it's a religious holiday, but we, Santa Claus is we have, holiday. we have, uh, as a uh, vacation, uh, of course, 
and uh, um, we celebrate uh, New Year Eve. Right. So what about because you have kids? I'm asking because you have kids. So most Russian children will receive a Christmas present from Santa Claus, right? Yeah. And do you do the same thing with your kids? Do you give them a Christmas present from Santa Claus? Yeah, of course, but uh, Santa Claus, he, it's kind of uh, not a religion uh, of course, person. Exactly. <laughs> of course, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. See, that's the thing, that, and that's that's what I want. Yeah. Can, can I add something? Uh, no. You should understand that we, please. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, you should understand that we, are, um, our country, Uzbekistan, we all were in one big country, Soviet Union, and Great. we were there uh, more than 70 years. And all people in Soviet Union celebrated New Year Eve. Right. So it's it's like the custom which were from year to year passed from our parents and from our grandfathers. You right, know? right, right. Yes. That's, that, that's because the same is with our kids. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. I was just curious um, because, um, you know, be, a lot of people, they get really stressed out with the Christmas holidays in America. And what really makes me really angry is um, I'm not very religious. You know, I believe in God, but, you know, I'm not this religion or that religion. Uh, I don't really – I think everybody can have their religion and I'm totally fine. But what makes me angry is in America nowadays, people are afraid to say Merry Christmas. I'm not joking. Um, so when, when I hear Merry Christmas or when I say Merry Christmas, I'm not thinking about Jesus. I'm not thinking about religion. I'm thinking about family and celebration and food and giving gifts and that's all I'm thinking about so if you go to Starbucks the coffee shop they used to say Merry Christmas on their cups but now they don't say anything and I was like that's so silly I, I it's I think it's ridiculous um, yeah, it makes me mad. It does. It makes me mad. There's nothing wrong. And I have lots of Muslim students. I have lots of atheist students, Buddhist students, Hindu, Hindi students who don't care uh, if I say Merry Christmas. They say Happy Ramadan to me and I say Happy Ramadan to them. You know, I'm, I'm not Muslim, but I, I can appreciate the, the celebration and your history and, and everything. So it really makes me mad. That's why I'm asking, what is it like in Russia? Because Russia is similar to America, where you have many people of different religions living together for a long time. Um, so is it okay? Can people say Merry Christmas or not? I mean, that's what I was just curious about. In America, I'm very angry, very disappointed these days that people are afraid to celebrate a holiday because they worry other people might be offended. I think it's stupid. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I understand you, Cochin, but I want to say that in Russia uh, we have a lot of uh, Christians and uh, Muslims and uh, we know we kind of, we can live together, you know. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you can live together, you can accept each other, you can appreciate yeah, yeah. each other, uh, yeah, holidays and everything. Sure, of course. Ridiculous. Yes. Don't come to America. We need we need to get rid of the current government. We need to change it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. I got a little political. Sorry, everybody. Any other comments or questions? Marwa, go ahead. No, I just say you're welcome. Your opinion is very great, and I agree with you. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I sent out I send out uh, greetings if I remember. I always say Happy Ramadan, Happy Eid to my students uh, on Facebook. Uh, the same thing I say Merry Christmas. Uh, if there's Buddha's birthday, which is every May fifth, I think. 
Uh, I try to say, you know, happy birthday to Buddha, uh, whatever it is. Um, but uh, yeah, I just in America, it's really changing, Marwa. It's it's really it's it's really <laughs> sad. <laughs> Everything changes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Politi pol uh, po political uh, invades our, uh, uh, our brains. <laughs> politics. Jeez, Power. I hate politics. Yeah. But you are the <laughs> you are the uh, the main reason, Cochin. You have to uh, to admit that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Ah, <laughs> uh, Santa, thank you very much. Yes. No book club next week, everybody. Um, I will be out of town. Uh, so two weeks later, we'll be uh, having our book club. Next week on Thursday, I will be driving from Chicago to uh, my home here in Nevada. So uh, we will not have our book club. Uh, is that What is the schedule, Santa? Is December 31st, is that the next one or not? Maybe not, right? Santa, we have the schedule. Can you show it or say it? That's the next one? Okay. But wait a minute. Um, show us the schedule of the chapters. Uh, January 8th. Okay, yes. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, guys. So this is the next book club is January 8th, and then after that, January 15th. Correct, Santa? Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, there we go. There we go. Thank you, thank you. So we have no book club <gasps> for several weeks. Uh, January 8th is the next one. Yeah. Yeah, bring it down. There we go, so we can see everything. Get rid of December 17th. Get rid of that one. Delete. There we go. So January 8th, January 15th, uh, this is what's happening. So we have lots of time, you guys. So take your time. Please think about this. Maybe listen to one story a day, and then maybe write a summary. Three sentences. After you listen to this st story, just think about it. And maybe uh, write a couple of sentences. Uh, and then uh, January 15th, we'll finish the book. And then in February, and probably, I don't know, but I'm guessing February, the second week, I'm guessing the second week is when we'll start again. I'll contact Santa, and Santa will send everybody an email. I'm guessing the second week of February is when we will start again. I'm moving to Chicago. Uh, that's the situation. So also, we need to choose our next book. So I want you guys to start searching audible.com. Look there. I'm good, okay. Yeah. Uh, make sure it's an audio book and start making recommendations. Send Santa an email. This book looks good. I'm good, okay. Now, when we talk about ooh, Santa wants Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh, when we choose a book, you guys, I recommend three hours to six hours long. Anything shorter, so-so. Uh, Anything longer, too much. So three to six hours long is perfect for an audio book. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. Questions? Guglia says, I will miss you all. Me too. I'm going to miss everybody. I hope that you all have a fantastic uh, start of 2016. I'm pretty excited uh, next year. Uh, one thing I want to do, I'll, I'll tell you secret information. One thing I want to do is to try and double my uh, business, I hope. <laughs> double the price or double the business? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, good idea. Double. No, no, no. 
I'll keep. It, I think every year I've increased the price, but I think uh, I'll keep the price the same. Please don't do that. Make a <laughs> make a sale for us, please. I'll keep it the same. We're very poor. <laughs> I know. I know. Not for the DM. I'll keep it the same. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today, um, and have a Merry Christmas, have a Happy New Year, best wishes, and I did send cards to, who did I send cards to? I think just Marwa and Mahmoud, I sent you cards. Did anybody thank else you. ask for a card? <laughs> Santa, you didn't give me your address. Valerie, you didn't give me your address. Guria, you didn't give me your address. Uh, but you know, I, I told you. For me, it's not really important. I, I know. Uh, yeah. If someone really wants a card, I, I want uh, the person to have it. <laughs> You're very nice, Valerie. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Valerie will re-gift my card. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will throw it away. <laughs> 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 Mahmoud says Hunger Game. Once again, you send your recommendations to Santa, and then Santa will send out everybody's recommendations. We'll vote if uh, most people, yeah, we'll choose the book that people want the most. That's for sure. Um, Koche, about yeah. the card, isn't this too heavy for you to send the card? I just want to know. Well, actually, Guria, it's too late anyway. I already sent. The card. Uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> next, next year, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what? You have children, so I'll make an exception. Because you have children, uh, send an email to me with your address, and make sure you write your address exactly like it goes on a card. Okay, like an and and. Okay, Katya, exactly. I wanted the card only for children from you because I want to right. show them. You see, Katya <laughs> wrote. No, exactly. Uh, I think it's important. Kids love to. And, 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 and one for me, please. Yeah, sure, sure, Alex. Yeah, I have a special card just for you. No, no, I teasing you, Katya. I teasing you. <laughs> I don't let me, need. <laughs> let me say hi to Masood. Masood has been very patient, listening quietly. Masood, uh, I'm sorry. I need to say hi to you again. Oh, thank you so much. Just you remember me. Yeah, Actually, I am listening for 140 hours, one hour and 40 minutes, and it was too patient for me. Did you enjoy it? Yes, uh, I really enjoyed it, and I want to say thank you for adding me in this very informative group. I'm very I happy really to have you. It. But, but I, I want to talk too much, but actually, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the chance to talk. Uh, I, I, next time. Absolutely. And next time, I want you to, to participate more if you can. Masood, where are you from? I'm from Pakistan originally, but right now, I'm living in Saudi Arabia. Oh, wow. Very, where in Pakistan? From Pakistan, I belong to Punjab. You Punjab, know something about Pakistan? Near India, correct? Yes, near India. Yes, you can yes. say I know the India and Pakistan. These are the same countries. It's it's confusing for many Americans. <laughs> yes, but it divided. No, in 1947, India divided in two countries. Then in 1971, it again divided in two countries. Now there are three countries in uh, the continent: Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. There you go. Uh, previously, previously they are well, just one, like India. And interestingly, as far as I know, Pakistan is almost, I think Pakistan is almost all Muslim, correct? Yes, I think 99.9% popula population is Muslim there. I think it's the most Muslim country in the world. No, not uh, the biggest country. I think Indonesia is the one. Ah, uh, for Indonesia. population in Indonesia. Yes, uh, and uh, by, I think, by area, I think it's maybe so down. But no, wow. Sudan divided in two, and maybe, yes, we are, I think, second and third numbers. Oh, that's great. That's great. I get uh, so many students uh, at this time are in the Middle Eastern part, and I'm guessing, obviously, what time is it in Pakistan right now? Or, I'm sorry, Saudi Arabia. What time is it in Saudi Arabia right now? Uh, it's 12.41 a.m. now. <laughs> oh, it's, it's very late. late. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> I, I was... 
I was too much interested in this book and I listened. I enjoyed it, but uh, I wish I could talk too much. But okay, wow. hopefully next, next session I think I we can. I hope it. so, Masood. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for everything. Excellent. Well, Alex, Eva, Gulia, Marwa, Masood, Valerie, and Mahmoud, thank you so much. Have a great couple of weeks, and I will see you in January. And thank happy you. birthday to you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Gochen. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Gochen. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Bye. 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 Thank you Santa. Bye. Thank you, Thanks, Santa. Bye. And happy new year. Happy new happy year. New year. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday.